if you're a business owner, there's going to come a point where you need a stronger tech stack to have a clear picture of everything all in one place. From startup to enterprise, NetSuite is your one-stop solution. Visit netsuite.com slash SPI to download their KPI checklist for free and support this podcast too. If you do find yourself buried in manual work or struggling to have a clear picture of your business, you should know three numbers. 37,000, 25, and one. 37,000, that's the number of businesses which have been upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. 25, NetSuite turns 25 years old this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. And the number one, because your business is one of a kind. So you can get a customized solution for all of your KPIs and one efficient system when, with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need to grow, all in one place. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash SPI. That's netsuite.com slash SPI to get your own KPI checklist. netsuite.com slash SPI. There's a better way to create a website, a professional, crisp website you'll be proud to publish, and it just takes seconds. This is all thanks to Hostinger's AI website generator. I recently took this for a test drive, even shared this on my YouTube channel. It was mind-blowing. Not just how quick you can build a website, but with the AI, how great it actually can write copy for you. You can use the AI logo maker, plus it got it up in no time, and it looks good. Absolutely mind-blowing. So if you want to build a website, go to Hostinger, because they're a top, highly rated global web hosting platform. And all you have to do to build a website is just answer three questions and let the AI do all the work for you. You can build as many web pages as you need without knowing how to code a single line of anything. They have great support, too. That was one thing that I had a problem with with a with a with another host back in the day. Hostinger has 24-7 support and a library of video guides. And here's the thing. You can do this for less than $3 a month, including a free domain name. That is crazy. So create a live website now at hostinger.com slash SPI. And listeners of this podcast, you can enter SPI for 10% off your order and a free domain name, H-O-S-T-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash SPI and use the code SPI for 10% off and a free domain name. Give it a spin. This is the Smart Passive Income Podcast with Pat Flynn, session number 106. Mm Mm-hmm, let's do this. Welcome to the Smart Passive Income Podcast, where it's all about working hard now so you can sit back and reap the benefits later. And now your host, his mom breaks bricks with her head, Pat Flynn. Want to stop grinding through resumes and just meet your match already? Well, you can with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. It's your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, plus their matching engine helps you find quality candidates fast. And it works like really fast. In fact, by the time this ad's over, 23 new hires will have been made on Indeed, according to Indeed data worldwide. It's the perfect match of speed and quality. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. And I think Indeed is the place to go. It's easy to manage. Everything is in just one spot. The interview process, it's scalable with you and your business as it grows. Like there's no other platform you would need than Indeed. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored ad job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash smart passive. Just go to indeed.com slash smart passive right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash smart passive. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire, you need Indeed. If you're at a desk a lot like I am, it is really important to move around and increase circulation as much as possible. And a sit slash stand desk can be a massive game changer. If you haven't tried one before, this offer from Uplift is for you. Plus, you can support the show at the same time. Visit upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. Uplift Desk is the place to go. There are so many customization options, plus free 30-day returns, free shipping, free accessories with every desk. And did I mention the industry-leading 15-year warranty? It's no wonder they've been wire cutters pick for six years in a row. Plus, they offer a great range of ergonomic chairs and storage systems if you want to give your whole workspace a makeover. They even have an augmented reality feature so you can see what your new desk will look like in your space using your phone. I mean, they even make a height-adjustable conference table that doubles as a regulation-sized ping-pong table. These folks have really thought of it all. And if you want to build the workstation of your dreams, I highly recommend checking them out. Just go to upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. That's U-P-L-I-F-T desk.com slash SPI to get 5% off your entire order. 
yeah, don't don't mess with me because I'll get my mom on you. Like, for real. Because she is a beast, but she's awesome and I love her. Uh, she used to compete in brick-breaking competitions. She's a second Dan black belt in Taekwondo. And she'd often be the, actually she was always the only female competitor. And she's taken home a, a few first and second place trophies. So, mom, if you're listening to this, I love you. You are amazing. And uh, thanks for protecting me my whole life. <laughs> Everybody else out there, what's up? Welcome to episode 106 of the Smart Passive Income Podcast. I'm just so thankful that you're here. Um, I can't believe we are just rolling along and these episodes are coming. I and mean, there's so many interviews lined up. And I'm, I'm just so excited about this one because... A little quick background story about how uh, I met this person, but also how we've been working together lately with some other people here in San Diego. Well, I went to FinCon last year, and that's where I did my first keynote presentation. And I met a woman there named Mary Beth Storjahan, and she was just amazing. We just clicked right away, and we hung out a lot, and I I got to know what she did for her business. And uh, it just really stood out to me because I know the personal finance industry. That's probably the space besides the entrepreneurship blogging space that I know the most about because that's the first sort of community of bloggers that I ever read uh, when I first started reading blogs, even before I started blogging myself. And so it was really interesting to hear how she's now in the space and how she's doing it and also how she's really focused on on getting clients first and to- doing it in a totally non-passive way, but she's working toward building a passive income from first starting out with clients. And I think this is a good, this is going to be a really important show because a lot of us, we immediately try to do something online and, and have it be automated. But some of us in some niches, especially in competitive ones, you might be better off doing something like Mary Beth did, which is really working closely with clients, honing in on your skills, getting recognition for the work that you do with the clients. Um, Mary Beth has also been on TV a number of times here in San Diego. I've seen a number of her spots on uh, her, her YouTube channel. And uh, it's just amazing what she's been able to do. And now she's sort of done the reverse. So a lot of us typically, we will, you know, build online products and information products and then hire clients from there. However, she's hiring clients first and doing really well with them. And now she's going to sort of branch out and have a passive income uh, selling products to fill in the gap between those who, um, you know, want that information but can't afford her time. Uh, this is a great way of approaching it. And so I'm very, very happy to welcome Mary Beth Storjahan from WorkableWealth.com. And actually, she and I and Caleb Wojcik, or Wojcik, Wojcik, gosh, sorry, Caleb, uh, didn't mean to. There's a, it's just a weird last name, man. Like, I'm sorry, logic, Caleb logic, like logic. That's how I know. Um, but, uh, the three of us, um, we were all at FinCon together last year and we decided to set up an in-person monthly mastermind group here. So we have a lot of people here in San Diego who are entrepreneurs and we were, we were able to pull a bunch of them together and we just met last month in person. We had a nice dinner and we decided that, I mean, we immediately clicked and we, um, sort of just gotten to know each other really well then um, and and now we're going to meet each month and that's going to be really cool because I'm already in three virtual mastermind groups and I've been a part of physical sort of in-person mas- mastermind groups before but they've always failed but I think they failed because we were just having too much fun not to say that mastermind meetings aren't fun but for instance one of the ones I was in we had our meetings while playing frisbee golf frisbee golf in Balboa Park here in San Diego and so we would have a lot of fun, but typically we wouldn't be getting a lot of work done. So these are going to be highly focused meetings in San Diego. And, uh, you know, who knows how big it'll be, but for now it's just uh, eight of us here in San Diego, including John Lee Dumas and and Kate and um, Rick Mulready and Amy Clover and uh, just a lot of amazing people. So I'm just very thankful to be a part of that group and thankful for Mary Beth for actually helping to set all this up. Um, so I, let's just get right into the interview because there's, there's some really golden nuggets here in this particular podcast. It was a great conversation. Um, you'll also hear how well-spoken she is when I ask her questions, and that's something I ask her about at the end because um, she's obviously very good at that, and that's something that I think is a skill that we should all learn because – Communication is really what this is all about. So let's hear from Mary Beth Storjahan from WorkableWealth.com. Mary Beth, welcome to the show. How are you? Good. I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. 
Now, tell us your story. What you know, you're in the personal finance niche, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Not personal finance, but you're in a very competitive space, and I think a lot of people are reluctant to get into a space that they know about because they know other people are also doing it. So, we're going to talk about you know a lot of the cool things that you're doing to differentiate yourself from everybody else in that community, uh, which I got really excited about when you started telling me about what, what you did. But but what, what were you doing before you had WorkableWealth.com? Before I started Workable Wealth, I actually spent about 10 years in the financial planning industry. I did a little bit of uh, career ladder climbing, Mm -hmm. hopping around uh, different companies and really establishing my expertise and growing. And my most recent position was actually as director of financial planning with a local San Diego firm before I launched Workable Wealth. Okay. And what made you decide to start to, you know, go online as opposed to continue going up that ladder? You know, since uh, my backstory on why I'm really in this industry is that um, I grew up in a family where money was talked about and struggled with and fought about time and time again, and Mm -hmm. I had to pay my own way through college. And so long story short, when you turn into this industry, you get your own degree, you're paying through things, I had to get a job, and I got my first job in the industry. So I've been in the industry for 10 years, and I majored in financial planning. So at that time, I realized that a lot of my friends and peers were not getting the same money education that I was getting through my major. So that passion of mine, the passion of mine to work with this younger generation really started while I was in college. And in this industry, you're told no time and time again. So I was told no that I could not work with this generation. This generation has no money. Um, They are entitled. They don't want the advice. I was told no again and again, and it wasn't until a couple years ago that I stumbled on some people who are doing exactly what I want to be doing, and I began to just start the path of going online and setting up a lifestyle business and being able to access clients across the country. That's really cool. Who was saying no to you? You know, the financial services industry is a little bit of an old boys club. You know, you're just told there's a a mindset that you need to work face-to-face with your clients, that you need to work with clients who have a million dollars in order to charge them a fee for their assets and their management. So I, I got no across the board from different companies I worked with and just different people I shared my ideas with. Right. And when you discover these other people who were doing and targeting uh, Gen Y, as we call it, um, that inspired you and kind of validated your idea that it would work. Oh my gosh, I was, I was so excited uh, to stumble upon uh, these people who are already doing it. It was fantastic. Now there are other people already doing it. A lot of people at that point would be like, oh, well, they... They're already doing it. They, they took my idea. How or where did you get the confidence to go and do it yourself as well? And how are you differentiating yourself? I got the confidence just uh, something new. There are other young financial planners out there that are doing this already. Something I, I feel really confident is that I have 10 years of industry experience backing me. I know I have worn so many different hats in running an actual financial planning business from the compliance side to the website side to the paperwork. I know the inner workings of how to run a firm so well that I just felt so confident that I could basically take this and translate it into an online business on my own, servicing a market that um, I'm passionate about. Sure. So I, I felt confident just in my, in my skills and my knowledge right there. And the thing is, there are people who are doing some really successful work already with this, but I'm, I'm different. I, am, I want to work with Gen Y. I am Gen Y. And I also believe in establishing a niche. And Gen Y although they are my client you know, age group, they're not my specific niche. I'm not trying to work with all of Gen Y. I niche down from there and I picked markets to work with that I, am relate, I relate to. Very cool. Now tell us about when you first got started. So you're in corporate and then you decided to go online. You discover this sort of area of personal finance that you wanted to focus on. What were your first steps? How did you, how did you start your online business from where you were before? So way back, about five years ago, I actually started my own personal finance blog under an alias name that is, is no longer in existence, but <laughs> I, had, I had that running for about a year and a half. And at that time, I, you know, I discovered the online personal finance community and some of the greats that are out there right now, J.D. Roth, Jay Money, all of these great people. I saw what they were doing and just the level of education and the bringing it back to the basics that they, they could do. So seeing that online presence just from having a blog is where it all started. Mm-hmm. And then in reaching out and seeing how some other people were incorporating using Skype and Google Hangouts into their, into their businesses there, and Gen Y is so tech savvy and we're so pressed for time as it is that it just made sense to me to why not make this transition and to 
have access to a wider market and bring it, you know, online and provide, you know, education to the masses as opposed to saying, I just want to service local San Diego clients. Right. I mean, first of all, the personal finance community is awesome. That's why I always say FinCon Mm -hmm. is like one of the top events that I go to every single year. PT does a great job of putting on a show there. But I mean, I go there because it really does feel like a family. Um, and that's obviously where we connected last year and I've connected with so many other people in the industry. Um, and they helped me get my start as far as doing presentations and stuff. I mean, that's why I just, I love the personal finance community. I read a lot of personal finance blogs when I first started, including JD Roth, um, you know, Trent from Simple Dollar and all of those people were amazing. Now, the interesting thing about what you have now, Workable Wealth, I mean, you had a blog and you had an alias and you were doing that whole thing, sort of like what they were doing. But now it seems like you're not just, a blogger. You are actually providing services and stuff. How are you? How do you? How are you generating an income from from what you do online? So I like to say I'm shaking up traditional financial planning, and something new uh, in the industry is following a subscription basis model. So my clients pay me a one time upfront fee, and they pay me then they pay me a monthly retainer forward. So I charge the upfront fee because obviously there's the initial investment in the creation of a comprehensive financial plan. I want all of my clients to have a plan of attack covering all their bases before we get started together. But then from there on out, they'd pay me monthly. So just like you would pay your gym payment or your cell phone bill, I make it easier on their cash flow and they set it up through PayPal or any other online service to send me that monthly payment. Okay, so you have clients that come in. That's that's your goal here is to uh, provide an education, build trust, but then have people come on as clients and pay you. Yes, exactly. How soon after you started your website, workablewealth.com, did you start getting paying clients? Uh, two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. Wow, how did you make that happen so quickly? I was reaching out. So there was a lot of legwork that went into the development, uh, you know, prep work that went into Workable Wealth. So I was spreading the word early on, reaching out to some of my contacts. Um, when the website went live, there are other financial planners that I know who are no longer taking clients. And so they now send their um, any prospects to my way. So I've gotten a lot of referrals and traffic to my website that way too by establishing, I think we, you and I have talked about that, that abundance mentality. So just networking and leveraging those resources and contacts that I have. Absolutely. I mean, if I could go back into time, you know, I always say this, take the DeLorean, head back, talk to my younger self. One of the things I would tell myself is you got to meet, talk and befriend as many people as you can because I mean, I wouldn't get to where I am at today if it wasn't for the other people in my life. Now, I don't give myself credit for where I am. I give the other people around me who has helped me and supported me and also given me the contacts and referrals to make things happen in my life. Oh my, I completely agree. I would not be where I am or at the level of business that I'm at right now if it was not for the amazing mastermind group that I have of planners that are across the country doing what I'm doing and just the leverage and great supporting network, supportive network that I have. What are the biggest struggles you have as you know, building a business that's sort of client-based? You know, I actually just had this conversation with um, a, a fellow entrepreneur this morning. The struggle uh, in building a client base is, especially as a female, you know, sales is a dirty word <laughs> in, some, in some areas. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. establishing the relationships and being able to build that trust and credibility. So I think that's probably what the biggest struggle is making sure and convincing people, you know, people who come to me, you know, especially 20, 30s, they're trying to get a handle to understand their finances as it is. So sometimes it seems pretty counterintuitive, counterintuitive to have to spend money to make money. Mm-hmm. So that's probably one of the, the struggling is, is helping people to kind of wrap their mind around that. And how do you do that? Just curious. I do that by helping them to understand you know, the value that they're getting. They're getting an accountability partner in me. I'm, I'm happy to say, here, I'll, I'll develop a financial plan for you. But after 10 years in the industry, I know that if I develop a financial plan and hand it off to somebody to take care of on their own, it's likely going to get set aside and get dusty. Mm-hmm. So I let them know that part of this s- subscription program, part of my financially sound package, is that you're getting accountability check-ins from me on an ongoing basis. So I can I streamline that. I do email access. I'll just do a quick follow-up, checking in how that's go- how things are going. They always have access for questions. And they're also getting leverage to, and input from my network. So if they need a CPA, if they need an estate planning attorney, I have professional contacts that I work with on the back end and I'm saving them time and saving them confusion and questions by connecting them to the people that they need to talk to to get their goals met. 
Wow. I hope everybody who is just listening to this uh, picked up on all of that because that is so important, I feel, and that's how you're providing even more value to these people, not just giving them something like a plan. And that's something a lot of us do in the online space with whatever niche we're in. We build an info product and we just sell it and that's it Mm -hmm. and there's no further contact. And you're able to not only charge an upfront fee but a retainer monthly to have people be, you know, your client you as their accountability partner. I really love that phrasing. Checking in with people, that stuff is so valuable and that's the stuff that really gets people to take action and to make sure that when they get lazy that they do do the work to have whatever happen that you want want to happen. Um, exactly. I, I love the email follow-ups. I mean, those are, those are nice, quick little touches um, that don't take very much of your time but can mean the world to actually changing a person's life. Exactly. And the feedback that I get from clients when it comes to just, you know, the thing that sets me apart too is I bring it back to the basics for them. So I want it to be easy to understand. So getting that feedback that this is exactly what I was looking for, this is so easy to follow, and I appreciate the check-ins, that's, you know, that's what gets me going. That's what makes me super happy and and knowing that I'm working with the right types of clients and following my passion. Mm -hmm. You know, I love this conversation because we're talking about, you know, clients and starting with clients. And I think a lot of people are in industries where it wouldn't make sense to start with, you know, an online-based product per se, but to actually work individually with people at first. And I'm curious to know, you know, the the, the, the thing about working with people one-on-one is that it, it scales only up to a certain point. Mm-hmm. And it gets to a point where you can't take on any more clients. Are you doing anything or do you have systems in place to make it easier for you to perhaps even take more clients than other people might be able to take? I leverage technology a lot. So I, I do have systems in place. I also have a content manager. I have marketing assistant. So I have help with these other levels of managing my website and getting and pushing content out there so that I can take on more clients and leverage my time to create the financial plans. So I, I do have those systems in place. And I also am looking into ways to service clients who might not be able to, or people who are coming to me who might not be able to afford the fees. I am looking into those online course developments to to be able to, you know, provide some sort of education to them on a cheaper basis. Yeah, that's a really interesting thing. So co- sort of combining the client-based stuff with, you know, it, it's almost like what we see a lot in the online space, you know, the entrepreneur gets started online internet marketing space is, um, you know, there's info products sort of on the, on the lower tier level. And then there are the higher end products where you actually get access to people. Now you started with giving access to yourself and sort of charging a good amount for that. Now you're sort of just filling in that gap for people who can't quite get there yet. Yes, exactly. I love that. That's going to be really interesting. When is that coming into play in your business? That should be coming into play before the end of the year. I'm actually uh, working on content to develop a newlywed boot camp. So I have a lot of newlyweds that come to me who are trying to figure out how to merge their finances and establish a budget together, even the communication around money. Um, So that's one of the big focuses that I want to kick my course off with is is newlyweds. That's a that's really smart. So you're not not only are you in the Gen Y niche, but you're taking newlyweds within the Gen Y niche and creating something special for them. Exactly. I love that because when people come to your site, they see that you have this product um, that is just. I mean, it seems like it's just built for them, as opposed to, hey, everybody, here's financial help. I mean, that's sort of on the grand scale. Now you're like, hey, everybody, here's some Gen Y help. But then now you're like, hey, if you just got married. I mean, finances are a big topic when it comes to marriage. I know this. Um, I mean, that, that's that's a great strategy. So I think everybody out there, you know, could could you perhaps in the audience that you have now find a sub niche and cater to them, sort of like what uh, Steve Camb over at Nerd Fitness is doing. So so he's you know he has this general fitness website and he gives away a lot of great information for free. He has his forum, but his first product that he created was a fitness course for females, and then there's going to be one for males. And then there's going to be, I'm sure, subdivisions of that as well for maybe different weight classes or different um, goals within fitness as well. Exactly. Yeah. So my hope is to kick it off with the newlywed boot camp and then from there develop a new parent boot camp because that will allow me to actually leverage the content that I'm creating. There's a lot. Of, there's some similarities in there. I can repurpose it and I can also t- target a different niche. Wow. That's so good. That's so good. I can't wait to see this progress because I know you and I are going to be talking a little bit more yeah. regularly now here in San Diego. We just sort of created a uh, sort of a group where we're going to be meeting um, on a regular schedule to hold each other accountable and just keep each other focused. So I'm really excited to see that take off for you. Thanks. And I'll make sure it happens. I'm going to hold you accountable. Yes, that's exactly. <laughs> I'm a part of it. I'm a part of it. <laughs> um, 
Now, I think it's obvious people will probably agree with me when I say this. You are really good at answering questions. You you are very natural at it. You are just feel very comfortable when I'm when I'm asking you questions. Um, I know that you are on TV a lot. Ha- I mean, because I mean, I've seen you on you know NBC and other channels here. I mean, they're all over your YouTube page, which is great for social proof. But I I'm curious, how did you end up? getting featured in in sort of mainstream media in that way for for what you do. So, you know, I actually just established a guide for this a couple uh, days ago. Um, I'm participating in B-School right now, and I've had so many questions about uh, interviewing with the media that I I created a guide. So it is on my website at uh, workablewealth.com slash media buzz. But where I started was actually with just basic writing. And I would do some guest posts for some industry associations on their blog, and from there, that actually, my, my exposure on this industry blog led to some quotes in Yahoo Finance. And then I, when I decided to launch Workable Wealth, before I even launched, I decided I was going to get active on social media. And I joined, I started on Twitter. And it was a little awkward at first because I, you know, like to think about things and make sure I post the right comments. And so, uh-huh. but then it just, I got into a natural flow and I realized Twitter, people get really resistant to it and try to figure out, well, what if my clients aren't there? My clients, my prospective clients are not on Twitter, but who is on Twitter is the media and the industry. So what I found that I can do is Twitter, I'm, a, I'm connected to other financial planners. I'm connected to any of the industry publications, their editors, their reporters, and I join the conversation from a Gen Y perspective. I share Gen Y content across the board on different topics, but I always make sure to pop in and add my input from a Gen Y perspective to any conversations that I think are relevant. And I began to build my um, exposure, basically, as a Gen Y expert. So now that's led to my being profiled in different industry publications. The NBC stint, my recurring NBC thing with Bob Hansen out here, actually came from me sending a tweet to NBC. And Bob Hansen picked up on it. And the next day, I had an email from him and we were talking story ideas. That's really cool. And that reminds me of a story about a guy named Benny Sue who... Man, they're like doing landscape work right outside my window right now. I can hear it. Let me let me start over. Okay. That reminds me about uh, that reminds me of a friend of mine, Benny Sue, who has a blog over at getbusylivingblog.com. He sent out a tweet just randomly, just sort of as a as a way to express sort of anger because he had um, he has a a bunch of iPhone apps and one of them has the word candy in it. And the guys from Candy Crush sent him a nice cease and desist letter for using the word candy. They're trying to trademark and get rid of all the people using the word candy, which is crazy. Um, But anyway, uh, Benny just sent a tweet out about that. And and, and then all of a sudden it started to spread and mainstream media started to pick up on it. So I think that's really interesting that that also happened on Twitter. And then Benny was on, um, you know, a number of different, uh, different, different media channels as a result of just tweeting about it. Yep. I mean, it's really interesting. I never really considered the fact that that's where a lot of people are, are sourcing um, information for for news. Oh yeah, I mean they're definitely not. I, I wouldn't be able to connect with my in, with other industry experts or the media on Facebook or LinkedIn. They're just not there. But I can see what other editors are writing about and the things that they're interested in from Twitter. So that's really been something that I, a resource that I can leverage and that I encourage others to leverage, especially when you are you know doing a niche market. Find your find where your competitors are, find who they're following, and find where the industry publications are and who those editors and reporters are following as well. And that really will give you some insight and some you know just a platform to begin to build your personal brand off of. Mm-hmm. Do you have any tips for anybody who perhaps might land one of these spots on a you know on a news channel or even you know. I mean, on a smaller scale, somebody, somebody's podcast, maybe they have an interesting story or somebody asked them to join them on their podcast. How can one best present themselves like you do on somebody else's show or some you know, TV network? You know, when you're asked to be on a podcast or you're asked to be on a network, always know the topic you're coming on to speak about. So some of the things with, with NBC for myself, for example, I, I'll get a call from Bob Hansen, you know, two hours before he comes in saying, hey, I have this story. I'd love to hear your comments on it. And then that gives me some time to really frame my thoughts and do maybe a little bit of research if I need to. So being prepared and knowing who your target, who your audience is for, for whatever um, media piece or outlet that you'll be featured on is huge. And then also just kind of relaxing. You know, one of the things that 
you, I think we talked about this at our meetup, is I talk pretty fast, especially when I get passionate or heated about something. I, I, my hands fly around. I'm Italian. <laughs> so uh, one of the best things I learned from one of my uh, mastermind, uh, person in my mastermind group for financial planners is she told me to don't focus on talking slowly, focus on enunciating. And that has been huge for me from a media perspective. I, you know, NBC is those appearances are pre-recorded, so they are able to edit those in, and they they basically find the best clip. I was on a ten-minute live segment on a panel talking about Gen Y finances on TV in November of last year, and I, you know, I felt like I rocked it because I just focused on enunciating the whole time. There wasn't an um that came out of my mouth, and I was, it was fantastic. So I think just being calm and doing your research and just running through the points that you want to make ahead of time is a great place to start. That's fantastic. Do you have a story bank? For, you know, this is something that Ramit Sethi would always talk about and something I've been trying to develop and think about consciously is he has sort of a bank or a library of stories that he has that he's able to pull out in different situations or different conversations. Great stories that he's almost sort of tested and validated, whether it's in a presentation or in other engagements with other people. He remembers those things that work really well, those stories that he tells that just seems to really resonate with people about different topics, and he's just able to, like a computer, just file through those things and, and say whatever is perfect for that situation. Do you have sort of a story bank like that? I do, actually, yes. Uh, my whole reason for being in this industry is one of my main stories about just um, my family and the financial education that, that, you know, there was a little bit of a lack there. And so being able to effectively communicate that and the respect that I have for my parents at the same time is, is something that I have in my, in my story bank. Also, I'm a military spouse. So those are stories that come up a lot. There's a lot of transition and change and varying income that comes along with being a military spouse through deployments. So those are those are part of my story bank. And again, so my I'm Gen Y, but we talked about those sub niches. So I work with professional women, newlyweds, new parents. I'm a professional woman. I'm a newlywed, a couple of years, and new parents. That's the next phase that we're going in. So those are all things that I experience and stories I can relate to for my target clients. Mm -hmm. You're just not some like person who's not who's just trying to pretend like they know what's going on you you're living it exactly exactly and you know and the thing is i share with my clients that i'm not perfect you know i might get some judgment one of my first blog posts was i'm a financial planner and my estate is not in order i didn't have a will you know i want my clients to have a will but i you know i let them know i'm not a perfect person either i i I have the education. I know what's needed. I am here to coach you. And sometimes I need my own account accountability coach as well. That's just part of the game, part of being a business owner and a person. And a person, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're being real with your clients. I mean, there's no wonder that people stick around longer because they know that you're telling the truth. And when you tell the truth about yourself, when you're giving advice, people are going to take that advice much better. When it might not seem like, you know, from the outside that that would make sense, but it totally, it totally helps to be vulnerable and to share those pieces of yourself that might not be perfect. I mean, that's, I do that all the time on Smart Passive Income. Exactly. Awesome. Do you have any tips as we finish up here for anybody who is just getting started online, who, you know, maybe they have a niche they want to get into. Maybe it's a little bit competitive. How can people help themselves stand out of the crowd? You know, look for, look at what the industry is doing and see how you can make, how you can be different. So for example, for me in the financial planning industry, if you go on most financial planners or financial advisors websites, you are going to either see a lighthouse or a happy old retired couple on the beach. <laughs> so like those are like the two things. And so then when you go to the Workable Wealth website, boom, like my face is there. There's fun, positive quotes. So whatever you can do to shake things up, it's, it's scary to put yourself out there and to go to break from the crowd. But that's what's going to make you stand out. Blending in is not what's going to get clients. That's not going to make it more confusing. And you'll, you'll have less uh, value add that way. But standing out makes that light shine on you. So... I think it's the not being afraid to be different. Yeah, I mean, that's that's huge, and that's something that plays a big role in my marketing plan. And it's not just, you know, I don't just do it for the marketing aspect of it. I mean, I feel like the traffic and the earnings and the authenticity and the trust that comes along with that is just a byproduct of me just, you know, being comfortable with who I am and what I what I can provide and also understanding what I can't. Oh, yeah, I think personality is huge. If, and that's, I think we talked about this as well when we met up, was just incorporating a little bit of you into your brand. That you are unique. Each one of us has our own skills and traits that we bring to the table. So letting that shine through, especially if you're in a service-oriented brand, that's huge. 
and, and embrace it. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you. I'm on your website right now, and it looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Again, this is workablewealth.com. Um, I noticed the phone number in, on the upper left-hand corner. Is that doing a lot for you as far as generating new clients? I, I noticed that on, on, on a lot of client-based type websites, and I'm curious to know how effective that is. Or does that is that there just purely for, yes, I'm a real person, you could reach me if you wanted to type thing? It's purely there for, yes, I'm a real person, you can reach me. Most of my clients, since I am a paperless, technology-based office, clients are emailing me. So if you actually look, if you're on the homepage, you can schedule an appointment and coordinate with your calendar directly from that homepage. So I very rarely have people calling me and, you know, and to be honest, and I'll be completely honest with this, I do screen my phone calls for the most part. I typically don't answer my phone. So if a client's calling, they can leave a voicemail. And I want to make sure to make the best use of their time and my time. They can leave their question on my voicemail. I can do the research and then I can get back to them. Otherwise, if they're calling and catching me off guard, you know, there might be some back and forth. But this way it makes I, I'm not my phone's not ringing in the middle of me writing a blog post or doing something else. I just try to focus and batch my time. So I'm the most effective. Mm hmm. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to achieve the same uh, result as far as just being real. I mean, I, when I go to a website and I want to potentially buy something like the next model scale of the DeLorean or whatever, and I'm on a hobby site, if there's a phone number up there, it just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable about that purchase I'm going to make. As if if something wrong were to happen with my order, I could just immediately call and, and fix that problem. Exactly. Yeah. And I do. I have I've had a few calls now and the, now and then, but typically um, even the media, they'll send me emails. They don't tip, reporters don't typically call me. They'll just. Everybody reaches out via email, the contact form that's on there, or just directly to me. That's really cool. Mary Beth, this has been such a pleasure to speak with you here and have you provide all this value. I mean, um, this is just fantastic. I think it's going to inspire a lot of people, um, especially those who are just starting out and might be weary about starting with information-based products. I mean, it's okay to start with clients, and obviously Mary Beth here is starting with clients, doing really well with that, and now is shifting over to info products to serve an audience that she can't serve or who might not be able to afford her services. I mean, I feel like that might be a really interesting strategy for a lot of people to adopt because you're establishing, your, you're, you're setting sort of a benchmark as far as what you're worth. And people will respect you for that. And then you can provide something on the lower end for people who can't afford it. And I think it, it, it could potentially be a lot more successful as opposed to if you flipped it around and you started with, with the lower end information-based products. Oh, exactly. I think there's a, there's a trust component there. So I'm building the credibility from having the existing clients and, and establishing the company first and, and even the media stuff that happens from it. So uh, I'll have a much wider audience to market the boot camp to down the road than mm-hmm. I would if I had just kicked off with that and you can collect testimonials beforehand and you know you're actually talking to these people um who trust you and they would probably i'm guessing would be more than happy to leave you a testimonial if you asked exactly exactly very cool mary beth thank you so much where can people find out more about you or where would you like them to go they can go to workablewealth.com or connect with me on twitter at mary b storage s-t-o-r-j Awesome. Thank you so much for for coming on today. Thanks so much for having me, Pat. I appreciate it. Take care. You too. All right. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Mary Beth from WorkableWealth.com. A very smart woman doing some amazing things in a very competitive niche. And so she's definitely one to follow. And also she has a very beautiful looking website. So again, check it out, WorkableWealth.com. Now, if you want the show notes, if you want the links and the resources mentioned in this episode, head on over to SmartPassiveIncome.com slash session. One zero six again, smartpassiveincome.com slash session one zero six. As always, iTunes ratings and reviews are completely appreciated. Thank you so much. I read them all and they are so inspiring to me and help motivate me to keep going. And also they help the rankings of the site too. So more people can find the show. And lastly, I want to mention an amazing resource. And that is actually today's sponsor as well, which is 99 designs. Dot com. This is an amazing website because, you know, we all have graphic design needs in our business. And, you know, I'm very fortunate to have graphic design experience from my previous job. But even still, I still use 99designs.com to get some graphic design work done because what's really cool about it is instead of working with one designer and just going back and forth and, you know, it's hard to find that designer. And then even when you do find them, there's a lot of back and forth and it can be frustrating. Well, with 99designs, you kind of put in the description of what you want to see, whatever it might be from a logo to website design or whatever, and then 
you know, potentially hundreds of designers will come and create what they think you want. And then you could pick the one that is the best that works for you. And you can actually work with them along the way. You could tweak things. You can have your friends vote on what they think is the best. It's just so cool. So again, that's 99designs.com. Check it out. If you go to 99designs.com slash pat, you'll get some bonus stuff, a $50 power pack free um, just for going through that link. So again, that's 99designs.com slash pat. Thank you to the fellas at 99designs for sponsoring the show. Thank you to all of you for listening in and checking out this episode. I love you guys so much. Uh, Every time I hear any sort of feedback from the show, whether it's on iTunes or just comments on the post or even on Facebook and Twitter, it's just It's just so motivating to me. And so thank you so much. Um, I imagine, you know, many more hundred episodes after this. I I can't I can't even envision stopping this because I just I just love it so much. And it's because of you guys. So thank you so much for the feedback. And also I love constructive criticism as well. So whatever you feel like I do to improve the show, um, you know, I do this for you. So I want to do it the best way I can. So thank you so much for listening in. I'll see you in the next episode of the Smart Passive Income podcast. Again, show notes are available at smartpassiveincome.com slash session one zero six. Now make the rest of today awesome. That is your job from this point forward. You rock. Take action. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Smart Passive Income Podcast at www.smartpassiveincome.com. Hey, have you ever wondered what makes the difference between a one and a five-star review? Well, turn into Behind the Review, a phenomenal podcast from the Entrepreneur Podcast Network. Each week, Yelp's small business expert, Emily Washkovic, features a different conversation with a different reviewer or business owner to find out what was really going on, as the title suggests, Behind the Review. Recently, for example, Emily featured an episode about Aldea Country Eatery, the number five spot in the world on Yelp's top 100 places to eat. Emily interviews a wide variety of customers and business owners from a wide variety of industries, tabletop gaming companies, fitness industry, you name it. This is a really fascinating peek into what makes a great customer experience for any business and you won't want to miss out. So listen to Behind the Review right now on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or Stitcher.